I went on a run yesterday. My mind, as it often does, began to wander. Reflecting back on all the streets I've jogged down over the last 10 years, all over the country, up north in Canada, down in Mexico, across the Atlantic, as long as my body would allow me, I was running. You could say it's become over time something of a, a spiritual occurrence for me. And so as I made my way down A1A, I asked myself, why? Why has it meant and why does it continue to mean so much to me, this sort of arbitrary uh, activity or exercise? And not only that, particularly during the times where everything else in life feels so unsteady, when there's chaos and turbulence all around me. Well, this is the conclusion that I came to. It was the clarity. It was the simplicity that continued to pull me in and keep me going. See, when I was running, I always knew what I had to do. And there was calm in that, reassurance. Perhaps most importantly, a purpose. Looking back at those days where it's 94 in Miami in August, the sun's coming down, you know, I'm suffering through the run. Or days where I'm running through storms, thunder, you know, cracking all around me, my heart racing because I know it's kind of dangerous to be there, but what am I going to do? I have to keep going. Those days up in New England in the Northeast, right? In the winter, that first mile where you step outside and the wind sort of cuts through you. You feel it in your bones. All that's uncomfortable. But problems, they seem manageable when you know where you're going. When you understand the rules of the game. And the rules of the game, every time I laced up my shoes, they were simple. You start at one point and you don't stop until you arrive at the other specified point. It placed stability into an ever evolving landscape. It reminded me during the most difficult times what it was like to be in full control. And I'm gonna say something that may appear drastic here. Um, I'm sure many of you know that saying, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, attributed to everyone from Lincoln to Da Vinci, to your next door neighbor. Well, I believe that simplicity saved my life. And I think it did many times. Now, it's been a, a very up and down journey as they all are, right? And growth is injecting yourself into a world you don't understand. It has to be, definitionally. It's being oversaturated with options. The road less traveled is uh, paved in distraction. And when my uh, purpose and my path felt like they were deteriorating before my very eyes, when my understanding of life felt like it was slipping away, which is a, a pain pretty different than stubbing your toe, right? It feels much bigger, it's much scarier. Um, it was faith in my ability to slay the dragon and find the treasure that empowered me. It was the thing that reminded me when I break things down into little objectives, not only do you conquer them, but you identify as someone who conquers them, right? It's peeling back the layers of complexity that reminded me amidst the clutter and the noise, there's simplicity in what I was meant to do. The shiny objects need not divert my attention we just need to take the time to identify our finish lines and they can change what matters, sometimes does. But the moral of the story is you can't live life trying to hit targets in the dark. And it just makes sense, right? Issues with the project I'm working on, go for a run. Feeling confused, frustrated, go for a run. Argument with the girlfriend, go for a run, 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 right? And I'd come back with less in my head than I left with, which would, funny enough, ultimately be more than I left with, right? The space to think about what matters. 
the simplicity of starting points and ending points. Nothing in life is that complicated, it's not. But we have a tendency amidst life's storms to stop running. During the heat waves, we forget why we're there. We lose that simplicity. We lose our purpose and our meaning because we let the unimportant things become the big things. And I think that's what running is. A reminder that, you know, when life is simple, we understand where we're going. Simplicity isn't uh, convenience. It's what keeps your heart beating and your eyes open. It is life. It's waking up, knowing what matters to you so that you can push away the things that don't. It's that reassurance that, yeah, there's a world of infinity outside the window, but what makes you brilliant is that you can identify and latch on to a small few things. The world around us often says, you know, we need to use the whole canvas. But I say there's nothing wrong with identifying your favorite color and going from there. I say identifying your destination and moving towards it wholeheartedly with conviction is a superpower. And it doesn't mean we don't stop along the way. It doesn't mean nature won't push us off course from time to time. But for one who's taken the time to identify for themselves a finish line, they are never truly lost, even during the most trying of times, because all that's required is a repointing of the compass. I will continue to run for as long as I can, because the further one moves into that abyss, the more life says, look over here. A is important. No, B is what you need. You'll never succeed without me or him or them. This way, that way, some in-between way is the right way. But no, all that is distraction. It makes you feel small very quickly and will make you feel unsure and ill-equipped just as fast. In my mind, the beauty in life is taking all that supposed complexity and finding within it what's required to paint our own masterpieces, to run our own races. Life is a run around the Charles, a run down the Hollywood boardwalk, a run to the Dania Beach Pier. It's knowing where your heart needs to go and following it there. It's saying yes when required and no when required, but understanding you are the one who decides what required means. Beauty is simple, contentment is simple, meaning is simple, and we can always access those things. They're buried under the complexity we spend our day-to-day -day swimming in. So, neighbor, here's to the ultimate sophistication, to getting more than you've ever had in your life by building your own parameters out of less. There's an old idea that once you've started, you're halfway there. How does that make sense, one might wonder. Once you've started, you've only just begun. And that's true, technically. But here's the thing. The journey, the ins and outs, ups and downs, trials and tribulations, they can all be dealt with. They knock us down from time to time, no doubt. But we learn, we adjust, and carry on as we move forward. Most success stories, they're crushed, not because of that adversity along the way, but because they never begin. They never take shape or materialize. We can't make them real in our heads. We can't convince ourselves that they'll ever be anything other than fiction. We think 
That's for someone else. We look around and assume that reality is different than my reality. And overcoming this mental constraint is always the most challenging step. And that saying, the one I continuously find myself coming back to, human beings always follow through on who they believe themselves to be, continues to be true. If you don't believe you're worthy of something, its pursuit is lost before it began. So while the mind tries to paint pictures of how scary that road is ahead, how it's too different or big or complex, understand that should you move forward, you'll find all that complexity can be broken down one day, one situation, one little step at a time. The only real demon here is the possibility of inaction because you couldn't make yourself believe it. You couldn't see yourself at the top of that mountain. And so, the front door was never opened. Emerson says, hitch your wagon to a star. A beautiful reminder that that star is proof your dreams are real. And only as real as the conviction with which you move towards them. Green light your own glory, your own contentment. Because contrary to what we might think, no one comes up and bestows that upon us. To live life fully is a decision. Decision, Latin root words, cut off. It's removing and abandoning your restraint in order to be more authentically you in order that you'll give yourself permission to chase down that which makes you feel alive and soak up all that aligns with your heart and soul. Once you start, you're halfway there. And oh, that first step, often perceived as the beginning, but in actuality a point few ever give themselves the luxury of experiencing. Step one, believe it's possible. Step two, believe you're worthy. Step three, go. Everything else works itself out. You're capable of dancing through life's chaos, of managing the world's unknowns. So know that, understand that, but most importantly, be one of the few who gives themselves permission to experience that. And it starts now. There's something to the idea or act of stepping out of the limelight to work on yourself. To quote unquote, disappear for a particular period of time so that with a laser-like focus, you're able to build and develop the skills that will make you great at what it is you want to do. In a sense, we're not created out in the world as much as we're created by what we do behind the scenes. The thousands of hours spent dedicating ourselves to a craft, right? We enhance our value and capability by doing the often monotonous, unglamorous things day in and day out. And those results out in the world are merely a reflection of that work. And that's what makes excelling in any given area so challenging. There's something uh, counterintuitive about performing to an audience of one. Dancing to no applause, exhausting time and energy, resources, uh, so that you can cling to a promise. 
But that's also why excellence will always be reserved for a few. Open to everyone. But ultimately, a few end up there, right? The same way a finish line is open to everyone. But ultimately, reserved only for those willing to put in the hundreds, if not thousands of practice miles to start the race, run the race, and complete the race. There's a substantial amount of sacrifice involved. The outside world is, is its own chess game. It requires courage and innovation and, and a willingness to step into its great unknown. But ideally, in doing so, one would be armed with uh, the competency they've acquired when no one is looking. It's a result of their own dedication and commitment. And I actually started thinking about this uh, during a Q&A I did recently, where someone asked if I had any thoughts on uh, how they could start a speaking career, right? I'm like, sure, happy to give my thoughts. First and foremost, uh, understand it's a long play. So be willing to endure that bumpy road, that journey. There's no magic formula that makes you an MLK-esque order overnight, right? You, you work forever to capture uh, a fragment of that excellence. And someone kind of chimed in, giving me a hard time. You know, we know, we know, Eddie, you hate marketing. And I'm like, marketing? It took me a second to connect the dots. How is this related? Um, And the light bulb went off, and I kind of laughed because I do bash marketing quite a bit. And I think what they were getting to is I'm always talking about the long game, right? I'm always talking about working on yourself, the back end, the deep work, chiseling yourself into something that's, Uh, unique, authentically you, extraordinary in its own right. Or being so good, as the saying goes, they can't ignore you. Uh, But at the same time, it would be pretty ridiculous uh, and and stupid for me to say marketing is not important. Marketing's pivotal, ingrained in some capacity in everything we touch. You have to be able to effectively communicate why something is valuable, obviously. But I think there is a misconception and genuine misunderstanding in today's day and age with regard to adding value, with regard to rising to the top of a niche or making an impact. You know, we see flashy posts and ads and videos and think, ah, that's the target. But that's just the mechanism for communication. That's the bullhorn. That's not the value add. In Cal Newport's deep work, he mentions how difficult it's becoming for us to break away from the social media and the push notifications and the emails and in solitude, do the kind of work that really moves the needle, that propels our greatness and makes us better at what it is we're looking to be great at. We officially exist in a world of distraction, where perhaps the greatest challenge now is how do we disconnect? How do we turn off? How do we slip into a state of deep work so that we can grow as people? And then sure, you market that competency once it's acquired. But the goal is not to be a society screaming into a void trying to sell boxes of air. We simply can't afford to leave substance behind. Value is ultimately what makes the world go round and it's created, again, outside of the limelight. And look, there's gonna be some bias to my approach based on the path that I chose to take. This has worked for me, so I stand by it. I advocate for it. And uh, surely there are some very talented people that disagree with me, and that's great. But I've always had the arrow pointed at what I want to do, what I want all this to mean at 45 years old, 55 years old. And right now, looking back, it's all the hours I spent writing in solitude 
or giving speeches to a wall in a studio apartment, recording and re-recording, adjusting my approach. It's reps, reps, reps. That, to me, is what matters now. That's what I'm most thankful for. And some time has passed, and as I transition into a new phase now, sure, I can get help and start blasting posts all over social media. That's easy. But the important thing is that I have a foundation to stand on. The posts are not the product. The craft is the product. And I want everyone to at least, whether they agree with me or not, understand that distinction. The million-dollar question, the differentiator is, what is your value add? If you can ask yourself that, right? What is the one thing I want to be the best in the world at? Where is my North Star? And then spend every day, at least some time every day, chipping away at that. You'll be unstoppable. But truly chipping away not feeling the need to share every detail with an audience or capture every second of what you're building behind the scenes. No, turn the cameras off, breathe, focus. Be private for at least a portion of your day. I think you'll find in that space this beautiful opportunity to reflect and build and step into an evolved version of yourself. Don't be scared to disappear and come back better equipped. Don't be hesitant to go work on yourself. If you're talking substantive impact, true value add, it's always the people willing to put in the hours, to do the things that most people are not willing to do, target, identify the areas that make the difference and then hammer those repeatedly. And look, I get it. You have to, in a lot of cases, uh, give up some of the now in order to reach an ambitious goal in the future. It's a trade-off, it's hard. But life is about trade-offs. And maybe this message isn't for everyone, but if you're listening to this and you want to achieve some semblance of excellence in a given area, it's inescapable. It means falling in love with a pursuit that's time intensive. It means showing up and putting in the hours often for little short-term validation. It means solitude because getting better is more important than attention. One of my favorite quotes is, confidence is earned. Well, you earn that confidence by showing up and committing to the things that truly matter that make you stronger. Sometimes we must step back to leap forward, disappear as we are in order to reappear as we wish to be. Real work happens when no one is around you. Can you trust yourself enough to bet on that process? Believe in that road, in that journey. If yes, you'll position yourself for opportunities and experiences that exceed your wildest imagination. What's the difference between simple and easy? Well, simple is straightforward, uncomplicated. Easy, on the other hand, means achieved without great effort. The difference between those two words is subtle, but essential to understand. One deals with the complexity of an outcome. The other, your will and determination to achieve that outcome. Becoming who you most want to be is simple, but becoming who you most want to be is not easy. Just like walking is simple, yet hiking up a mountain is not easy. The procedure didn't change, the context did. So let's talk about context. 
Let's talk about this cyclical nature of growth because it's not that most people can't. It's that most people won't. It's not that most people don't get how. It's that they don't have a strong enough why. The path is laid out before you. You just have to be willing to walk down it. Will you? Step one, realize there's more out there. It's not that what you're doing now isn't amazing. It's just that yesterday's act of courage is now today's status quo. What was the spectacular is now the mundane. What was once the ceiling you had to jump to touch is now the floor you walk on. So at the very least, it prompts you to ask, well, what's next? Simple, not easy. Step two, the acquisition of courage. Yesterday's courage was a fight. It took a lot out of you and it's ultimately what got you here. But it dropped you at the curb, it waved goodbye and went on its merry way and here you are. You can stay here. A lot of people do. You can reminisce of the glory days, the old path, yesterday's triumphs. Or you can do that perpetually uncomfortable exercise of vulnerability. Stepping into tomorrow's unknown, reminding yourself that life's greatest rewards have a hefty price tag and that price is discomfort. But I've already played this game, one might think. No, what you did was learn the rules. Now it's time to apply them to a new setting and around goes the merry-go-round. It might seem like a replication from the horizontal, but here's the secret. You can't see the vertical. You have yet to look down and see your ascent, see what you're becoming. Just by staying on, holding tight, just by believing in yourself enough to begin again, you are fanning those tiny flames of courage in your soul that wait to be spread like a wildfire. Simple, but not easy. Step three, mistakes. Now, of course, it's not the mistakes themselves you fear. It's what you think those mistakes will mean. Ridicule, embarrassment, lack of direction or identity, losing what you have, but here's the catch. When you realize the upside is greater than the downside, you liberate yourself. When you realize there's more to gain than to lose, your potential for greatness is born. How does one act on this mistakes? By making mistakes, by injecting yourself into the turbulence of progress. Our biology has not yet learned that the uncomfortable thing is the right thing. And that's why you get resistance. That's why it hurts. And it's why few people will accomplish what you will. When it comes to your climb, every day is opposite day. When they run out, you're running in. When they play safe, you play for the victory. To become who you might be, you must learn how to get there. Mistakes are your curriculum. Simple, but not easy. Step four, trust yourself. Okay, sure, no problem, easy. Well, yeah, it's easy when you're getting what you want. But evolution takes time and there's nothing quite like giving and giving and giving and not getting. There's nothing quite like stepping up to the plate again and again and again and bringing no runners home. So how does one find the strength to continue walking up to the batter's box? Well, growth is exponential and those swings and misses matter. The infield singles matter. Everything matters because it's all chiseling your future self out of stone. Nothing is dependent on the next at bat as much as all at bats in the aggregate. That's why success is so often considered to be sheer will, dependent not on the home run, but on the discipline, the self-belief to keep walking up to the plate. 
repetition and adjustment. Repetition and adjustment. Repeat and refine, repeat, refine. Those are the materials from which all things are made. Simple, but not easy. And then we have the finale, the ending step five. Celebrate and adjust. At some point, you'll be able to look over your shoulder and notice something that perhaps you hadn't before, space. Space between where you are and where you started. It's not sudden, but gradual. And undoubtedly, with enough persistence, it will emerge. These moments, they are precious. They are times to acknowledge what you've accomplished, the sacrifices you have made. They are life's way of reminding you what you are building and who you are becoming. It's a time of celebration. Every little win means something. Every small victory matters, so relish in it. And then, transform it. Normalize it, recognize that that mountaintop is your foundation now. Your starting point has changed and so have you, which means so have your expectations. With an increase in ability comes an upgrade to what's possible, what's expected, and look at that. We have arrived at a new step one. Realize there is more. This is the process for capturing that which life has to offer. If you can fall in love with that, appreciate it, respect it, while simultaneously understanding it's not scary, it's dependent entirely on your ability to push forward. If you can understand that, there is nothing you can't do. Nowhere you can't go. Simple, yes, easy, no. But you're not in this for easy, you're in it for the journey, the growth, the adventure, you're in it because it's not easy. You'll see in time, as will the world, that this decision to endure was simply the best one you ever made.